A space of two feet was a difference between life and death for the man in 2B. After a cast iron pot and white hot mixture blasted through his floor and ripped him apart, when a meth lab exploded one floor below where a woman lived with her son who would get a glimpse of his mother bloodied but alive, in handcuffs, before he was taken to the orphanage funded by the state, who asks you to play a part in the role of parent until the cost of his education goes off the books and makes you, whether you know him or not, infected by meth. Thank <laughs> you. 
Headline is startling enough, the first increase in the suicide rate in a decade. Even more shocking is what's behind it, a rise in suicide by middle-aged white women, a group we think of as soccer moms, not suicide victims. The report compiled by Johns Hopkins researchers covers the period from 1999 through 2005. With our current financial crisis, the tragedy could get worse. Suicide prevention counselors say calls are way up, with twice as many women calling now as four months ago. So far, these are just statistics. Researchers need to examine the stories behind the numbers. What led these women to take their lives? Were they under pressure at work, at home? The sad truth is we simply don't know. Most prevention programs focus on those traditionally considered to be high risk, like teenagers, young adults, and elderly white males. This study shows we need to rethink that. That's a page from my notebook. I'm Katie Couric, CBS News.
The damage to the SUV very, very heavy. You can see the front end is crushed, debris. <laughs> Just a few and now the man involved in this drug bust so is behind bars. George Burgess now live. They tell us that meth labs like. <laughs> is behind this meth lab is in jail. Authorities tell us they got a bit of a break to catch him and eventually... And right here at this home on Wall Street... ...to make sure they weren't exposed to any of the chemicals involved. traffic stop. Police say Aaron Collins had a warrant and was believed to be involved in making meth. They tell us Collins eventually confessed to running the lab. Now, according to a third of these labs like this one are very common inside the city limits, so they were surprised to find it, but happy to find it. Second story of the burning and home. They, they were both taken the day the children and are expected to be okay. Yeah. Now At we're this told time, that this home belongs to a female, but that she wasn't involved they aren't in the meth making anything and likely won't be in any kind of trouble. Uh, Collins, on the citizens. other hand, will more than likely be charged with possession a little bit later this morning. Reporting live, Jordan Burgess, two news on your side. To come up with a final resolution in concrete that you know. That these are the events that happened before the fire. Their employees and are faced with a difficult decision, contribute more to their health this coverage, or risk losing their jobs. Their executives say the company cannot afford to put the date and climate control plan running unless workers make concessions that all This time, I We get to a positive agreement, we can keep 900 people employed here daily. The company says it has to have a contract with the union by Thanksgiving or the plant will close. According to the deputy's report, a caller reported a suspicious vehicle parked outside a vacant house. When deputies arrived, they found Meadows and a 17-year-old girl in the
about that. Pump up, pump, pump up ounces and it's You got no problem with the crime? The problem with your business is closing up? President and or Congressman Mike Turner or even Senator Sherrod Brown and George Voyager Bishop question, what would it be? General Motors for 13 years building the SUVs. I did everything from uh, installing radiators to mufflers. I worked on the engine line. When they call us in for the meeting about the closure, I thought, okay, they're going to drop another shift, maybe, maybe just maybe drop a second shift. <clears throat> but they came in and said we're going to cease production. I was shell shocked. Why couldn't this company bring in a vehicle that is selling? instead of the SUVs which the market has dried up for. Well, they said that our job was going to leave and it was going out and um, we could either transfer to another plant or take a buyout. And I chose to take a buyout at the time and go to school. Industrial sales, and that was my background. This is welding engineering, so I just can't find anything. In Dayton, Ohio, it's pretty bad. My uh, last job I had was over the road truck driver, and I did that for a year. You know, it's pretty tight right now. Uh, very few places are doing any hiring, and a lot of places are closing down. Well, the buyout helped me to where that I could take care of my kids and not work at the time that I was going to school, because I was being a full-time mom and I was uh, going to school full-time. So that helped me in that way. But, um, you know, once it's gone, you need to start back over again, so. Yes, I have been on some interviews, and they tell me the same thing. They want experience, at least one or two years. And then you say, well, how am I going to get it if you don't give it to me, you know? So, I mean, that's where we are right now. We're making it from a normal standpoint. We're keeping the bills paid, but it is a very difficult process. We choose at the end of the month how much of which we're going to pay because it's much more difficult to pay the entire amount now. I'm starting to see things I've never seen yet. Yeah, the final notices, if you will, uh, gas and electric, uh, telephone bills being duplicated, things that we normally just take care of right off the bat. You know, that's bad. Basically, we are in a state of emergency right now. I've known people that are losing their houses, and they don't think it's fair for the, um, for the bank and the big corporations to get the bail out when they need help themselves, and they're not getting any help right now. Wall Street are thieves, so that's all I could say on that basis right there. You could quote me on that. So. How much money do you need? Okay, question. I don't think it's fair for them to get money and go on these expensive vacations and the people that's losing their homes have nothing.
you have to kind of reevaluate where you are. You have to make decisions and, and, and perhaps do things that you may not have previously done before simply because um, um, the world dictates it right now. You're, you know, people's lives dictate what they've got to do. And that's kind of where I think a lot of us are. I know at least that's where I am. It's going to be one heck of a change. I may have to. Uh, I, I may have to get a second job. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. But yes, it's. I'm not going to make anywhere near what I did at, at, at GM, and I and I know that. One of the ways I look at it, and and I think it's because of my faith perspective. So I tell people all the time, don't give up, because I think that there's some shifting that's taking place. That means that middle-income people and and lower-income people are somehow going to end up getting a bigger piece of the pie. I think that people are going to get so frustrated and tired of this whole corporate piece that this great shaking up is going to cause something to change. And I think it's God's way of saying, don't worry about it. I've got it in control. I'm switching some stuff around. I think we're going to go through a rebuilding process. And I think we're going to become that country that we certainly have the potential to become.